Welcome to using the lem function in Python. My name is Christopher, and I will be your guide. This course is all about Python's built-in len function that is used to find the lengths of container-like objects. I'll be covering how to find the length of a sequence or collection, using len with third-party libraries like NumPy and Pandas, and writing your own classes that can be used with len. The code in this course was tested with Python 3.10. The len function has been around since almost the beginning, so if you're on anything Python 3, you should be good. For most of the code, even 2.7 will work. len is one of the many built-in functions that come as part of the Python standard library. It is used to find the length of things, typically objects that act like containers for other objects. len works on most of the built-in data types and not surprisingly helps you find the length of strings, lists, tuples, and dictionaries, amongst other things. Everything in Python is an object, and operators are built through special methods on these objects. The len function uses just such a special function called dunder len. Dunder is what the cool kids call those double underscores. Or at least I'm assuming they were cool. When I was listening in, they wouldn't let me join their conversation. Any object that implements dunder len can support the len function. This means you can write your own. And many third-party libraries that have container-like objects do just that. This course will show you two examples, NumPy and Pandas. Next up, let's dive into len. I'll show you a quick overview and then use the REPL to show you what it is all about. In the previous lesson, I gave an overview of the course. In this lesson, I'll show you how to use len through some examples in the REPL. Len is a built-in function responsible for finding the length of container-like objects. If Python isn't your first programming language, you might find it odd that len is a function. In a lot of other coding languages, it is a method on container-like classes. Here's a quote from Python's original developer, Guido, on why he decided to do it this way. When I read code that says len x, I know that it is asking for the length of something. This tells me two things. The result is an integer, and the argument is some kind of container. To the contrary, when I read x.len, I have to already know that x is some kind of container implementing an interface or inheriting from a class that has a standard len. Out of the box, len works on sequence objects such as strings, bytes, tuples, lists, and ranges. It also works on collection objects, such as dictionaries and sets. The len function does its magic by calling an underlying special function on a class called dunderlen. So, in addition to all those things I just mentioned, any class that you or anyone else writes can support len if you like. Let me start by using the built-in help function to show information on the built-in len function. As you can see, it returns the number of items in a container. Strictly speaking, this means it always returns an integer. You can't use it on your line class to give the length of your line. You can try, but you'll get an exception if you try to give len a float. Trust me, I've tried it. Let's see some examples. The length of a string, of a list, of a tuple, how about some stuff that isn't there? An empty string, an empty list, or some empty brackets. That all kind of makes sense. Have you ever used the range function inside of a for loop? It is a special kind of sequence that returns numeric values in counting fashion. Here's a typical usage. In this case, range returned from 1 to less than 10, that'd be 9, which the for loop iterated through and printed out. If you try to use the range on its own without the for loop, you get back a range object. This would be why I called it a special kind of sequence just a second ago. Like many sequences in Python, you can use len on range. This is the same range I used in the for loop, giving nine things. Range also supports the ability to increment by more than one. 
this call counts from 1 to less than 20, that'd be 19, giving every second number. Okay, let me just create another list here. The set object is a sequence that only allows one instance of each thing inside of it. Calling it with numbers removes the duplicates. And I'm sure you'll guess what I'll do next. Yep, length of three. A set can be initialized directly using curly brackets. This can be a bit confusing if you're not used to it. Curly brackets with a sequence inside of it becomes a set. Curly brackets with key value pairs inside become a dictionary. So if I take the length of an empty set, like you might expect, it has a length of zero. Speaking of dictionaries, let me create one. This reminds me of a childhood toy, the speak and say. The cat says meow. The dog says woof. The person says a wop ba ba doo ba wop bam boom. And calling len on the dictionary returns three, one for each key in the collection. There are some data types that you can't call length on, though. Length of an integer doesn't make sense, and Python tells you so. No luck with floats, or booleans, or complex numbers. Remember my numbers list? Let's use that to create an iterator. Iterators are a way of incrementally getting at information inside of a collection. If you used numbers in a for loop, Python would create an iterator out of the list for you automatically in the background. Here's what an iterator looks like. It's just a reference. You get at the items in an iterator by calling the built-in function next on it. In this case, next results in the first item in the list. Let's do something funky. This only works in Python 3.8 or newer, but don't worry if you're on something earlier, you can just skip this step. Python 3.8 introduced the walrus operator. That's colon equal to its friends. This allows you to do assignment and get the value of the assignment at the same time. This while loop calls next on the iterator and returns it into value. I'll put a print inside of the while loop. And this while loop will keep running, calling next on the iterator, getting a value, and keep going until there's nothing left in the iterator. Let's give it a shot. It iterated over everything until the iterator ran out. When the iterator runs out, it throws a stop iteration exception and as I didn't catch that, that interrupts the flow. That's okay, I was done anyways. Seeing as this is a course on len, let me recreate the iterator and do the obvious. Yep, well, that didn't really work. That was a bit of a long walk to get to failure. Iterators and their cousins, generators, can have unpredictable lengths. As such, you can't get their length with the len function. If you truly want the length of something in an iterator, you can convert it to a list, but understand that that is actually iterating through the iterator and taking up all the memory with the result in the list. You can then get the length of the list. Well, that's the basics. Next up, I'll show you some common coding patterns with len.